Hi, this is Duncan Ferguson. In this unit, we're going to talk about um, trilostane. We're going to focus on trilostane uh, therapy in, in it because it's one of the relatively newer drugs being used, in, particularly in small animal medicine. It's been around a little bit longer, uh, and it was approved earlier in Europe. Uh, and we're going to compare its activity to that of OP prime DDD at the end of this uh, presentation. Now let's talk about uh, the other drug that uh, is now seen greater favor. Uh, it's called trilostane. Trilostane beta is a beta th three beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase inhibitor, and um, as as a result, it basically um, it inhibits the enzyme has to be maintained at appropriate levels to show its effect. So it has a reversible effect, unlike lysadrine. Um, as a result, this, you're not destroying the adrenal gland, uh, adrenocortical tissue, and therefore you can show uh, over time, and this has been shown by ultrasound, that in time you'll see an increase in the size of the adrenal glands, um, which may by itself lead to some uh, changes uh, from a pathological standpoint. Uh, the main effect is biochemical, uh, there are, but there are a few cases, only a few, that show adrenocortical necrosis sort of along the lines of uh, lysadrine. So uh, the best way to sort of see what uh, trilostane does is to show where it blocks. Um, it blocks fairly high in the pathway, the pathway from pregnenolone to pre pre uh, progesterone over here, and of course in parallel over here. So we can say it working there too. Um, and you can see that leads to cortisol on one side, and aldosterone on the other. And so this is a drug that um, works fairly proximally to reduce uh, production of many of the steroid uh, intermediates of, of glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids. So uh, how is it dosed? Basically, you start with a recommended daily dose um, shown here, and in 70% of the cases that, uh, in one study at least, they showed polyuria and polydipsia, that is, signs of hyperadrenocorticism, reduced in 70%. Um, skin changes resolved in, in uh, almost two-thirds, and there was a significant re reduction, this is how it's monitored, in both mean basal and post-ACTH cortisol. Uh, and so this, this particular uh, drug also requires a uh, post uh, treatment or intratreatment monitoring with ACTH stimulation tests. Its adverse effects, um, generally it's fairly well tolerated, but you can see signs of hypoadrenalism, uh, Addison's disease, if you will. In this case, we can see uh, altered electrolytes. Uh, so lethargy, reduced appetite, and then about 10% will actually show hyperkalemia, and that's because of the suppression of aldosterone synthesis as well. But a true crisis, uh, Addisonian crisis, is fairly uh, uncommon. That is the uh, glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid induced shock-like conditions. So on this slide, uh, we're showing some of the, the data that was used to gain approval of trilostane um, or Veteril, uh, and, and basically as it was done by the company DECRA. So you can see here on the right-hand side, it, an ACTH stimulation test in the animal showed uh, an increase. You can think about the, the high normal for cortisol being somewhere around here. And then uh, after two weeks, four weeks, um, six weeks, and 12 weeks, we, you can see that ACTH stimulation tests were well below the uh, normal range um, out here. So there, this would be an ideal response. Um, not only were ACTH stimulation tests followed, but following when you do it clinically, uh, you should follow biochemistries and specifically focusing on the sodium-potassium ratio so that you can pick up those animals that might have a uh, mineralocorticoid deficiency. So anything less than a sodium-potassium ratio less than 23 is something you should uh, pay attention to in, in patients that are on trilostane therapy and uh, consider that, that that will be a, a possible 
in indication of hypoadrenal corticism associated with an additionally mineralocorticoid deficiency. So in, in this table, I sort of compare a couple of things uh, between a couple of parameters between OP prime DDD, the old guy, and uh, basically the new guy. So we're talking old here, been around a while, and relatively new, uh, at least in veterinary practice. And you can see the efficacy for OP prime DDD is maybe a little higher here than um, it's been studied a little bit longer. But again, it's a comfort zone thing. Many practitioners find that while there's increased efficacy, there's also, you can see, it, the concern is over the increased side effects. Uh, survival times seem to be about the same. Um, what would be the best choice for an adrenal tumor that is a metastatic carcinoma? Well, clearly, that would be uh, OP prime DDD. Uh, but uh, for those that are benign or known to be benign, uh, trilostane can also work because you're really just looking to suppress the biochemical effects of hypercortisolism. As far as cost, there's uh, no question that uh, the new drug, trilostane, is more expensive. Both of the um, procedure, both of the types of treatment require uh, similar uh, types of monitoring, ACTH stimulation tests uh, per year but you might have a few, for, uh, fewer, con less concern about um, measuring sodium and potassium where uh, the biochemical screens definitely have to include sodium and potassium at least uh, to, to determine whether mineralocorticoid deficiency is occurring. And so that's another difference between these two drugs. So in summary, um, OP prime DDD, an older drug, induces adrenal cortical necrosis um, in, these, in the zones specifically that make glucocorticoids and sex steroid. And it would be a pr the preferred drug if you happen to know there's adrenal cancer, but that's not very common in the dog. Um, the most commonly dr common drug used today, largely because of its relative safety and the idea, I think, that people like to um, think about its reversibility as the drug trilostane, and trilostane is a competitive inhibitor of the enzyme 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, a crucial enzyme to um, synthesis of both cortisol and aldosterone. Uh, both of these drugs require monitoring with ACTH stimulation tests, uh, but you probably want to definitely be sure to monitor sodium and potassium um, chronically with uh, trilostane treatment.